Let's clear this up. Um, I'm not here uh, under the authority of EPA speaking on behalf of views that agency represents. I will put Weston Wilson not speaking on behalf of the EPA, although he works for the EPA. In 2004, the EPA was investigating water contamination incidents due to hydraulic fracturing across the country. But a panel rejected the inquiry, stating that although hazardous materials were being injected underground, EPA did not need to investigate. Weston Wilson, a 20-year veteran of the EPA, wrote a letter to Congress objecting. He also noted that on the peer review panel that authored the report, five of seven members appeared to have conflicts of interest and would benefit from the EPA's decision not to conduct a further investigation. They came out with patently ridiculous conclusion. They had showed it was toxic and then said it wasn't a risk. It made no sense and only in an Orwellian world would you accept that. From 1995 until 2000 when he became vice president, Dick Cheney was the CEO of Halliburton. One of the first things he did when he became vice president was to form what was known as the Energy Task Force. They met up to 40 times with industry leaders. They only met once with members from environmental groups. The Energy Task Force and a hundred million dollar lobbying effort on behalf of the industry were significant in the passage of what's called the Halliburton loophole to the Safe Drinking Water Act, which authorizes oil and gas drillers exclusively to inject known hazardous materials unchecked directly into or adjacent to underground drinking water supplies. It passed as a part of the Bush administration's Energy Policy Act of 2005. So all science at that point stopped. All science, all data, everything stopped. We were appalled about burying this kind of, maybe no pun intended, but <laughs> burying this, this secret uh, that it was known to be toxic. You know, when, when the president says to its bureaucracy, uh, don't investigate, expedite things for industry, we do those jobs well. One could characterize this entire industry as having 100 years of history of purchasing those they contaminate. So they purchase the land and often uh, with an agreement of secrecy of somebody that's alleging uh, they've been contaminated by oil and gas production. So the industry itself has that type of practice. You're saying if the industry itself should be proving it and not the people. This is America. We, we shouldn't be assuming that corporations can keep a secret, especially when they're practicing in our backyard. So the onus should be on the industry to prove to the government that their practice is benign and not that assumption. What you could be picking up from these citizens is what we should be investigating, but we're not. We're still asleep at the wheel. And don't assume because Obama got elected that uh, something's changed at the EPA yet in that regard. Even if it weren't true, they deserve an investigation. They're citizens of the United States. And they certainly don't deserve to be exposed to secret chemicals. It's not America. So, I understand your question and your frustration, you, and you're seeing how this may be a pattern repeating itself. But so far, we're not on duty. We're not present as a government agency to answer your legitimate questions. And we must be directed to. Surprised me, and I've been liking that water quite a bit. 
Ja, ich habe es gerade angeschlagen. Ja! Ja, das ist ein Postkarten. Das ist ein Bilder.